pitch what they want to pitch. And they really haven't gotten into the gear of things. The client will guide you in the conversation. Okay? Engage. Doing all these things about the boundaries, the warmth, the concern, engender trust, develop rapport, a personal style that meshes with your client, the ability to convey appropriate level of competence and confidence. Very important, the ability to avoid negative interpersonal behaviors is impatience, aloofness, or sincerity. Are you just there for the sale or do you really care? Okay? Bill really cares. He sits down with these people with heart and soul and they can sense that. Individual professionals, they must distinguish themselves in their local market. Guy, we have a sea of lookalikes here. You have to make yourself different. All right? In these times, the people are getting much more savvy, and the customers aren't disappearing, not by any stretch. They're just becoming more discriminating with who they want to work with. So what I always hear people say, oh, business is down, the customers are going, they're not going away, you're just not getting it. And you're not getting it because you're not doing something right in the practice. And that's what we need to look at and we need to analyze. If you're distinct, these current conditions right now are absolutely perfect for growing your business, your market share. If you're not doing that, you lose. I, we have a saying here at our office, if you guys are getting better, slower than your competition, you are actually getting worse. If you're not getting better as fast as your competition is getting better, you're getting worse. Cut and dry. Creating advocates. We have 10 steps in doing that. Who am I helping today to be successful? What am I doing to provide superior customer service? What superior product do I offer unexpected benefits and marketability? Do the unexpected and make clients day every day. It's not I sold it, I'm done. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit here because Craig's got a neat little thing that we did for one of our agents. What weekly tasks am I doing to improve my networking and communications? Are you guys dripping on these people enough? Am I publicly recognized by my advocates? Am I connecting with my connections? I excel at being open, honest, and human. Does my value proposition exceed my competitions? Okay. Do you, are you offering solution or are you guys pushing product? I know everybody says, oh, I do solution. Oh, I sell on concept. I want to tell you something. You guys don't. The majority of the people don't because when we talk to them here at the office, the first thing they get hung up on is what's the return, what's the return, what's the return. We don't know. You know why we don't know? Because I can't predict what the markets are going to do. And I know Bill and Keith, we're getting to you. I know when you sit with your clients, with the way that we have positioned our value proposition, the interest rate doesn't matter. You need to treat your clients like they're your first, last, and only clients. There's no one way to create advocates. There's all kinds of ways to create them. But your organization has to have the attitude to recruit these advocates. I want you guys to think for a second. Find out who your top ten people are. How often do you touch those top ten people? Probably not near as much as you think. One of our top agents, we did a survey for him. He drips on his people twice a month. They get something every other week from him. And Craig's going to talk to you a little bit about those results. It's about intentionally building trust. To build trust, you have to demonstrate character and competence. And Craig, I know when we did this for Stan, we sent out 50, uh, 50 pieces. Right? We sent a focus group to 50 of his clients, correct. Okay, walk everybody through what we did real quick with that. Basically, we created uh, two focus groups for him that he mailed out to his clients and asked them for their feedback. Um, he also included a Starbucks gift card, and we ended up being 50 for 50. We, we had 100% response. And what it did was measure the, what they thought of Stan as a, an advisor, as a financial planner and what he had done for, for their retirement needs. And the, the response that we got back was amazing. The, 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 the consistent response was that they're looking for people that are honest, that they deem to be competent, and that they, 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 uh, there was a lot of follow-up, not only before the sale, but, only, but also after the sale. And those were the three most important things uh, for the client when it came to dealing with Stan. It, was, it had nothing to do with product. It, it wasn't, oh, he offered this interest rate or that interest rate. It was all about him as an individual and how they perceived him to be honest, competent, and thorough. 
Well, and I thought the other thing that was actually pretty funny in there is everybody we asked, would you be an advocate for Stan? Well, we asked them how they thought their product had performed was one of the questions in there. And the people had said, well, we haven't made any money yet because the market was doing horrible. The next question says, what would it take? Would you be an advocate for Stan? And they all said, absolutely. So it was amazing how it had nothing to do with making this big, huge return. It had all to do with he met their expectation, exceeded their expectation, and he communicated and catch, kept in touch with them. And it also, in the brand process for Stan, helped him create his brand image, the name of his business, et cetera, because we were able to garner what the client really felt about him versus when you sit down and, and I talk to these advisors on a day-to-day -day basis, what they think that their practice represents probably isn't in line with what the client thinks. So developing the brand along the lines of what the clients actually think, uh, there's a lot of value to that. And, you know, when he did that, and that, that's this recruiting advocate, it was strong relationships, it was a system in place for recognizing and appreciation the contributions the clients made to his success. Something as small as a Starbucks gift card so we can get this survey back. Stan had a great philosophy. He said, I'm tired of digging and rooting through the bushes on this stuff. I want to duplicate my top clients. So we said, well, there's no better way to duplicate them than to take this survey, mail it to them, and let's see what they say about you, and then we can keep duplicating this. And we did. Always keep your name in front of your clients. You have to show by your actions that you're more than just a number on your P&L. Your goal I is to acknowledge. This last appreciate. bullet point here, Steve, is extremely important when it comes to creating advocates. Are you touching your client six to eight times after the sale is complete in the first 45 days? Are you reaching out to them to see that that you've exceeded their expectations? Are you sending them a, a movie tickets or a gift certificate to their dinner? That's very important is to keep your clients engaged so that you can influence their circle of influence. And one of the things a lot of guys do, and I, we hear this quite a bit from producers, they'll always say, well, you know, I picked up all the money. And you know what? You very may well have. Say you're absolutely phenomenal and you got all their money, but you didn't get all their family's money, all their friends' money, all their friends' friends' money, their aunts, their uncles, etc. And by staying in touch, actually caring, showing that you're there, engaging your clients, they will be apt to be your advocate. Okay? And some people win accounts, leaders will win hearts and minds. Customers take home products, your clients take home stories. And the story you want them to take home is how wonderful you are. Tourists bring back souvenirs, explorers bring back memories. Clients get good service, advocates get a great experience. It's about the experience of working with XYZ company. And I know when the people work with Bill, they walk back with this great experience. They think that they've just seen the Taj Mahal and back. Well, guess what? That's important. I'm looking at a lot of the guys on here. You guys all have books of business. You all have people that are on here. You all have opportunities to get in front of them. But are we doing it the most effectively and best way possible? Here you go. Here's Bill's story in a nutshell. He was referred to a client. He met with the client and completed a thorough fact finder. Right, Bill? Typical open appointment. By the way, guys, you all can't close very well if you don't open really well. You have to ask the question. Because if you don't get the information out, right, Bill, we want to find what his hot buttons were. We asked a lot of questions. Bill took the time to know his family and his hot buttons. This guy had two hot buttons, and, and Bill, he's the head of a charity or something down here that he does? It's, it's called Benavia. It's a charity for seniors out here in the West Valley in Glendale, Arizona. So that was one of his hot buttons, and leaving money for his family was his other hot button. Okay. I mean, it's his passion. That's what he does. A absolutely. That's what he thinks about every day. So when Bill found all this out, we gather our information. He called the office, and we help him set up some solutions to get back and get with the client. Bill calls him up, has the appointment, goes back out, reconfirmed his number one question, and presented the illustrations. This guy liquidated his own account and did the deal in 10 days. Doug, bang. And Bill picked up, it was 2.4 million, we, right? We were, actually, we were actually paid within 10 days. He gave me 2.4 million within two days. I, you know, and this is all because of he took care of the need. Now, here's the neat part. That was the sale. That was great. But here's where Bill shined. This client became an advocate. Bill, you donated to his charity? We, we gave a little bit of money to his charity. 
we uh, took him to a Cardinals game. I know he loves uh, the Oakland Raiders, so they're the Cardinals' first game of the year was against the Raiders. I said, why wouldn't I take him to that game? So I took him to that game, and it just continued to build our relationship and turn him more and more into, into an ad, advocate for myself. Yeah, bought tickets. Well, obviously, Bill knew this guy's hot button was his charity, so what does Bill do? Oh, you bought tickets to his charity event. Absolutely correct. And sat well, that's with him a no-brainer. Actually, when, when I sat down with him, too, at that dinner, that's where I met probably three or four different couples I was referred to right there at that dinner. So. You know, I, I made him happy. We were, you know, giving money to his charity, and I was picking up clients and having a good time doing it. Bill attends the client's anniversary dinner. You have created such a relationship with this guy, didn't you? You got invited to their anniversary dinner. Yep, 55th anniversary dinner. All his kids flew in from California. Grandchildren were there, and uh, couldn't have had a better time. Right. And now you're invited to family functions and vice Absolutely. versa. Absolutely correct. And this guy is a major advocate on Bill's behalf. He calls the, the clients that he says, you know, you need to work with Bill. and says, well, if you're not doing this, you're crazy. You need to work with him. You need to give him your money. This product will work for you. This solution works for you. This guy is doing the selling. Bill's just kind of doing the facilitating at this point, huh, Bill? Just maintaining the relationship is kind of what I'm doing here. And, you know, we chatted a little bit yesterday, Stevie. My goal is to have about five to seven of these guys by the end of next year that are actively out there creating business for me, just like this guy is. And everybody here on this phone call has somebody or a handful of guys that can be advocates for them. And it, That's it's right. Just, it's turned my practice around. And it's simple. It's, I mean, you're having fun, you're spending time with good people, and you're doing the right thing. You're, and you're, it's, just, it's simple, it's easy, it's fun, and it works. And now you have over $5 million is coming to this advocate. Bill's created over 375000 in commissions just from the advocates people, not total, just from the advocate. Bill's looking at probably around six, seven 700000 when the year's all over. That's a little bit of a lifestyle change from the million dollars last year. Yeah, it certainly and, helps, that's for and, sure. And it's, not like you're working 70, you're, it's not like you're working 70 hours a week to accomplish this either. No, no. Absolutely I mean, we, not. We, we work hard every day. We do the same thing every day. We have a routine. We, you know... But, we're definitely working hard, but it's not 70 hours a week, and you know it's not a whole lot different than what I was doing last year. But it's it's a system that works. And you're not much deeper than $600 in in you know donation to buying the tickets and some knickknacks and stuff like that. No, uh, no. So, you know, a lot of guys always say, "Well, I don't have money for seminars. I don't have the money to do this. I don't have the money to do that." Guys, this is some very cheap marketing that can yield very high results. And it's, and it's been proven through the advocacy. One other thing that we do, this is a statement from one of the clients that, that we work with. Um, obviously, a lot of you guys sell annual reset products still because I'm not seeing all the business from everybody on here. Okay, guys, real quick, this was written in 513 of 09. If you go look at this over here on the right-hand side where it says balance allocation factor, the client's up 17%. Okay, we didn't cherry pick this. I promise you, I have ones that are up 60, 65 percent. If I did cherry pick, I would have cherry picked that one. But the reality of this, for all you guys on here that have sold BPA or BAA, you need to go look at some of these statements with some of your clients. You've done a hell of a job for them. You need to let them know prior to the anniversary date. This will help build more advocacy. Bill, this is what we did with your client. This was Marsha, one of your clients, and this is what you did. Okay. And now this person, oh, wow, that's not, I got more money. Right? We got to pick up extra stuff because of this. Absolutely correct. And guys, you can always stop by and say, hey, Marsha, just want to stop by. By the way, I had a couple movie tickets. You can use them whenever you want. Here you go. These are such, you know, $10, $12. It's the thought that counts. These are little itty bitty basic things in our practice that just make it that much better. When, uh, when uh, Craig was talking about Stan, this was a questionnaire that we did. This got sent out, and we, he actually, we had an agency do this with us, and these were the questions that we asked. How did you learn? What was your first impression? Have you previously met with other companies? Did you own annuities prior? What media do you read? What do you watch? How did Stan help? What do you think of the material he shared with you? What did you think of the annuity strategies ideas that he 